Alright, so go ahead and select your looks builder and add it on your uh, passes assembly layer, then click edit and go into your looks builder in order to start adding photorealistic aspects to your image. Alright, so let's put it this way. And as you see here, I have my uh, footage. It's better to, to select a good frame that you can see most of your um, most of your scene. Otherwise, if you uh, focus in on one object and you start adding effects, it will be much harder to to do to add it. When you play your all your all sequence, you might find that it's not really matching um, your colorization overall colorization that you want to achieve. So better to have wide shot. I'm gonna start from adding crush. Uh, it's Alex Roman technique to add two crushes in order to, to balance your white uh, white balance. So I'm adding one yellow and one bluish. And as you see here, both of those kind of canceling each other. But I'm getting really nice and getting really nice white balance to my image something like this now I'm gonna go and add coral color reversal this is actually uh, something that brings really nice contrast to my image so make sure not to overexpose any of your areas just a little bit of a contrast the next one is going to be chromatic aberration on my lens and this one of course also just for the feeling less for the looks so make sure you zoom in as you see here I already started overexposing my area here so make sure you're not overusing your coral color reversal too much all right, so something like this and chromatic aberration always shifts always shifts channels that are close to that color so make sure to learn how chromatic aberration works before you apply it to your images so something not too obvious would work fine for that purpose all right something like that be very gentle uh, with this by adding this effect because if you overdo it it will be not ticeable and it will be really really hard to see the re uh, the realism it kind of throws you away from realism so I'm always adding it just a little bit the next one is soft edges right here and I'm increasing the quality which is lower lowers my intensity and then I can lower the blur size somewhere between two and three maybe one and a half and three not too blurry then editing is uh, is another cool let's distortion technique right here and as you see here my scene a little dark so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add um, spot exposure just in the middle in order to bring my highlights a little bit better so something like this all right looks good moving on to the next one is the film grain right here another cool realistic aspect that a lot of poor camera lenses can get to your image so we are adding it just in order to have more realistic and cinematic look same here just for the feeling less for the looks so I never go above three 
so some somewhere between one and two let's put one just hide and unhide it maybe one and a half 1.5 is a little bit better it kind of brings the detail out it's just a smidge all right uh, next one is we have we have added vintage thing vignette soft edges chromatic aberration and now we need to add less distortion all of those realistic aspects we have uh, five of them right chromatic aberration soft edges when editing lens distortion and film grain i won't add more than that because then your image might get overwhelming look uh, we can fix colors by ranged asl and this will be on the on the post section from looks builder so as you see here, I can drag kind of in and out colors just to give a little bit more of a natural look, kind of balance my white balance because we have a little bit yellowish color going on. And the blue lights is actually working on that part here. So this is the shadows. I'm going to fix my shadows a little bit more. I really like this uh, this function in Looks Builder. It kind of lets you work your colors and fix fix the highlights, fix the midtones. It's a really nice approach to your realistic visualizations. All right, so this is pretty much this is the whole strip that I'm using here. Uh, you can add some uh, contrast to that image or if you want to add some highlights to that to your image by adding uh, D flare D flare adds a little bit more of contrast as you see here my image becomes a little bit more contrasty so also make sure you're not overdoing it you're not doing too dark or too bright places And always hide and unhide to see how this effect works in your image, in your favor. Something like this. Just a slightly change. Not too much of a drastic ones because we have a lot of them. This this why I like to keep them low. Uh, light flex is if is is the one that kind of brings the gamma a little bit high. If you if you overdid and you got two dark places, you can always kind of bring it up just a smidge all right so the last one the final one will be um, on the post will be the curves right here I'm gonna add it on the post and we can fix the every part of your image by tweaking its contrast all right, so something like this. And also hide and unhide. So we see we're getting really nice contrast to my, to my image and everything kind of starts to work with each other pretty good. So when you're done, go ahead and press finish. And as you see here, all of those effects right here were added to my sequence. So if we play it here, you can see that my sequence using really nice smooth edges pretty cool stuff now we can add a little bit more photorealism and uh, let me just add some realistic vignette vignetting to my image and I'm gonna use Miss flares in order to do that it's a really cool one I like it a lot so something about here 
just a little smidge. Something like this. Yeah. Now, after we've done this, we can add color balance and fix, do the final tweaks to our image in order to get the natural colors out of it. So some images might have a little bit of a yellowish tone, depends on how you did your color balance with your 3D scene, but generally speaking, everything can be fixed in After Effects. All right, so now my image a little bit too dark, so let's add some curves. I prefer curves better than uh, brightness contrast because with curves I still can fix a little bit better the contrast to my image. It's a really slow process and you always want to make sure you're not overexposing any areas of your image. All right. So, I mean, overexposure in some cases can be good if it looks realistic. If it doesn't look realistic, it can spoil. So, have a reference to rely on while you do your adjustments for color correction and color balance. So, it looks pretty good. Now, I have another, the final stage, the final addition to that image would be to add filters. And I saw that Alex Roman used a couple of filters that which just was pretty, pretty good uh, method, pretty good thing to use. So I'm gonna drag and drop my filter. I'm gonna add it to my scene right here. Whoops, I don't need that. I'm gonna zoom out and position my filter to fit my composition. I'm gonna go and put it on the soft light mode. And I'm gonna zoom and fit my composition to match to match my screen. Alright, so as you see here, this filter is pretty strong and it gives really nice and cool illumination. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lower it opacity here about 50 between something 40 and 50 percent 60 60 would work fine and then I'm gonna go and go ahead and duplicate it and add hue saturation to that layer press colorize and now you can rotate the wheel till you find that perfect position that balance all your colors and makes your image look realistic as possible. All right, so as you see here, we can give different moods by using this one, but somewhere here, somewhere here, I think it worked really nice. Same stuff here, you can uh, always increase or decrease the opacity just to match a little bit better. And if the saturation is too much, you can always lower the saturation. So somewhere here could work pretty good for my purpose. And I'm getting really nice also um, vignette and definition to my other objects. So pretty cool, huh? Alex Roman technique for making uh, realistic videos like that. All right, so when you're done, I'm pretty much done here. When you're done, you're doing your color correction and adding all the photorealistic aspects. You can go ahead and save, of course, first of all, save your stuff, French scene animation. I'm gonna call it two. 
and go to your render queue, select your project, which is uh, French scene main, drag and drop, select lossless H264. This is the format that I'm going to use. And locate your destination. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And when you're done, press render and you'll be able to render out your composition. As you see here, it renders pretty fast and compared to all the effects that we added and of course in compared to 3ds max uh, which might take a little bit longer but as our animation being rendered out here we can see how nice vinegeting and kind of cinematic bluish even colorized we can call it colorized because it's not only bluish it's also we can see purple and magenta this is those nice filters this is how they kind of work and change change the whole aspect of um, rendered sequence it's as you see here it's pretty different from uh, our original sequence that we have rendered out and it also brings brings much more cinematic look it's less clean and less architectural so some architects might not uh, want to have something as heavy as this um, this is pretty heavy. I added um, on purpose. I added too much of those so you can see how this stuff works um, I'm also going to show you after this render is done. I'm going to show you how I did uh, a little bit lighter version of this uh, of this scene not too much So uh, the render is done and we can play it. All right, so here's the sequence as you see here pretty heavy uh, post-production a lot of cinematic uh, aspects a lot of cinematic effects and now we can take this to Premiere Pro and add music edit it and do our professional uh, colorization and color correction in addition to what we did now but just before we do that let me show you the light version of that same scene that I, uh, I've made as you see here it looks a little bit lighter a little bit nicer and uh, not not that heavy uh, color corrected so got a little bit better color balance to it and not too much of a dark edges so um, I have a video here of this as you see here is pretty pretty light and doesn't have as heavy post work as heavy effects uh, as the previous one all right so i uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial go ahead and see the next one how to do premiere pro and how to render and import all your footage and combine and complete video clip all right